Is this the right shampoo for you if you are a man suffering from androgenetic alopecia? Find out in this video. We know that shampoos don't really reverse hair loss, however, they can slow it down sometimes in maybe single digit percentages, especially if they contain the right ingredients in the shampoo. And this is exactly what I'm gonna be looking into in this video, especially by shampoo called Revita from DS Laboratories. Let's start with the video, guys. This video is brought to you by GoFiber Hair Building Fibers. Pick up your free sample and get instant hair confidence. Start your transformation today. I've been suffering from hair loss for more than 12 years by now. I've been also using and trying out several types of shampoos like Region Pure, uh, Nizoral, uh, ketoconazole containing shampoos like the one from Hair Restoration Laboratories marketed as DHT blocking shampoos, the same as Revita from DS Laboratories. So let's take a look how Revita measures up to the shampoos that I've been uh, trying in the past and uh, what are the ingredients in this shampoo. Uh, Revita shampoo, high performance, high hair stimulating shampoo it has like 2000 something reviews uh, it's again website reviews not uh, to be trusted trusted as much as like Amazon reviews, for example, where the company selling the product doesn't have so much influence over uh, the reviews as uh, it has on their own website. Uh, one thing uh, right off the bat that I like about the way they are uh, selling the shampoo, it's called the Revita Refill System. Environmentally friendly packaging reduces plastic waste. That's one thing I really like about them right off the bat. Uh, they will send you one huge bottle for the first time. It has 500 milliliters and once you use it up, they will send you this little plastic bag, which uh, obviously consumes uh, smaller amounts of plastic. And it also lowers the cost for the company uh, for producing that shampoo and also uh, makes it cheaper for the consumer. So that's a win-win situation, obviously saving the environment. So it's a win-win-win-win. Great. Before we dive deep into their ingredient list of this shampoo, let's take a look at the clinical studies. That's an interesting one. Based on clinical studies, men and women experienced a reduction in hair loss and increased hair growth when using Revita shampoo daily for 90 days. Now, uh, obviously some nice percentages, pretty good uh, percentages, but if we take a look at the studies here, these are actually studies that are pretty much referring to somebody else's research about like um, ketoconazole, like here we see uh, application of ketoconazole in androgenetic alopecia here as well. So it's not like uh, their own research, their own clinical study on their customers who have been using Revita shampoo, it's not. Here I see a logo of DS Laboratories about nanosomes used in DS laboratory, Laboratories topical treatments, not in shampoos, they're using nanosomes uh, these are like uh, particles which encapsulate uh, the active ingredient, which then will be delivered uh, to your scalp. Uh, but more about that maybe in another video, if you wanna, uh, if you want me to cover the, their topical product uh, nan containing nanoxidil. So I, I don't see any studies. So there will be a little minus, but nonetheless, let's take a good look at 14 key compounds in this shampoo, guys, because this is actually the main topic of today's video, and I'm gonna pretty much share with you which uh, of these 14 ingredients are real deal which of them aren't because probably not all of these ingredients will be real deal probably not all of these 14 ingredients will contribute to you know uh, hair loss management in the same strength not really okay uh, i'm gonna share with you right now which of these are the real deal and which of these are not that necessary in these shampoos, shampoo or even redundant. Here you can see the 14 ingredients in Revita shampoo and I already separated them in like four main groups and also you can see the left and right column. In the left column we see amino acids, uh, vitamins and other elements and on the right column we have some other ingredients. These ingredients are also marked with orange, red or green and uh, on the bottom you can see also this little graphic which goes from least relevant to most relevant ingredients in a shampoo which should be conducive for managing hair loss, managing androgenetic alopecia, which, which means either it should promote or prolong the anagen phase uh, or it should block the DHT, dihydrotestosterone, in some way. There should be some research to back 
this up. If the ingredient is marked with orange, it means that uh, there is not enough data or no research at all as to whether this uh, ingredient could be uh, conducive to towards management of androgenetic alopecia or not, uh, or the research is unclear. And the bright green color already shows that there is some research which already suggests that this ingredient, when used in a shampoo, could have uh, uh, potential benefits for management of androgenetic alopecia. And if it's dark green, it means that it is the ingredient is very very relevant to you know be contained in a shampoo if somebody is interested to use that shampoo for management of androgenetic alopecia so that's a little explanation for this uh, we can already see that uh, the some ingredients of that shampoo uh, taurine cysteine and l-arginine in the first group are just amino acids that means that if you ingest proteins on a daily uh, basis from your diet these proteins will be broken down down into amino acids and these amino acids acids like taurine, cysteine and L-arginine will be then uh, in your body. You don't need to supplement them anymore. Not even talking about like supplementing them from the top, like in a form of shampoo. That doesn't make sense, okay? Unless you are like severely deficient in cysteine, which is one of the most important amino acids you should be ingesting for healthy hair, by the way. Uh, but uh, as long as you are consuming enough like couscous, eggs, lentils, uh, chickpeas, uh, turkey, uh, walnuts, these are all great sources of cysteine, guys, okay? So there is no need to really supplement it. There is no need to use uh, these amino acids in a shampoo. This is very likely not going to have any additional benefits. Moving on to vitamins. Another two ingredients of this whole ingredient list of Revita shampoo are biotin, vitamin B7, and niacin, uh, vitamin B3. Again, guys, these vitamins, B3, B7, uh, B2, B1, all that B complex, besides B12, B12 you can become most likely like deficient in, but vitamins like B3, B7, they are commonly distributed in protein rich foods like meats, uh, like eggs, like dairy uh, products. So uh, it's very unlikely that you will become like severely deficient in these vitamins to the extent that it's gonna be causing you hair loss. Obviously, if you restrict all of that B, all of the B vitamins from your diet after a couple of weeks or months, you will uh, experience some hair loss. It's gonna be like chronic telogen effluvium probably, which is gonna be caused by this chronic deficiency in B vitamins. But once you pretty much restore that B vitamin intake in your diet, your hair is gonna, your hair loss is gonna self-correct immediately. So again, supplementing or like including these vitamins in a shampoo I don't see any point any reason why I should want to do it and that's why they're all marked with orange and they are rather less relevant uh, to have them in a shampoo I don't think they are necessary at all other elements MSM caffeine 4% which means 40 milligram of caffeine per one milliliter prokyanidine b2 and ornithine if we take a look at MSM and take a look at what studies are they referring to uh, when it comes down to MSM uh, this is the study which these laboratories are referring to and this study has been done on mice and they have been uh, applying some topical solution uh, with MSM and they have observed some uh, benefits of course you can see it here how it pretty much uh, improved but again we have seen so many things growing hair on mice uh, it has been like uh, pumpkin seed oil it has been like um, that uh, peppermint oil so many things can grow hair on mice I mean you can see it here and also the hair cycle of animals especially mice is different I mean the mice uh, they shed and grow new hair much more frequently than uh, humans and their antigen and telogen phases uh, switch off very frequently not unlike uh, by humans you know so it's also a little bit different and it's questionable whether we can just transfer the efficacy of the topical MSM solution onto human and also this MSM wasn't used in a shampoo which is normally rinsed out by after three to five minutes. So there is no study on uh, using MSM in a shampoo. This is not very uh, relevant to me. 
Caffeine, on the other hand, this is probably the first ingredient in this shampoo which uh, I would give more attention to and it's a 4% caffeine which is um, actually 40 milligram of caffeine per one milliliter of shampoo and there is in fact one study, I mean they're referring like five different studies on caffeine. Uh, this is an interesting study on caffeine shampoo. Caffeine has been actually used in a shampoo, no topical caffeine uh, in conjunction with minoxidil. I know there is one study comparing 0.2% caffeine solution or something like that versus 5% minoxidil which has found uh, that the caffeine topical solution was not inferior to minoxidil. I think that's the conclusion of the study but in this study they wanted to determine the efficacy of uh, caffeine containing shampoo used over a six-month period in female subjects with AGA and urogenital alopecia. So unfortunately not men but this is a an actual study on caffeine shampoo. So let's take a look at the results. Subjects using the caffeine containing shampoo had significantly fewer hairs pulled in a hair pull test test at six months compared with subjects using the control shampoo. So this is actually a placebo controlled trial where the control group receives some random shampoo which doesn't have a caffeine in it and the, the treatment group uh, receives the shampoo with caffeine. The ma majority of pre-specified secondary endpoints were also significantly improved for subjects using the caffeine containing shampoo compared with controls. Both products were very well tolerated. Conclusion, compared with a control shampoo Shampoo, a caffeine containing shampoo was more efficacious with respect to the number of hairs pulled out at six months, hair loss intensity and hair strength in subjects with AGA. This study kind of suggests that it actually, yes, it makes sense to use caffeine in a shampoo, even if the shampoo will be like washed off, like rinsed out after three to five minutes from your scalp, it still may be beneficial after six months. You know, there's gonna be less hairs which are gonna be pulled out. That's good, you know. Uh, is it going to block DHT? No, but there is some other pathway uh, under which the caffeine uh, kind of operates or targets that hair loss. Okay, so that's good. The study also kind of confirms that caffeine may have something to do with prolonging the antigen phase because if we take a look at the results of the topical caffeine 0.2% versus minoxidil 5% solution, we see that at the baseline, the antigen, uh, the ratio of hairs uh, in the antigen phase in the antigen phase on the target area uh, started to increase from 53 to 58 by the third month and 63 by the sixth month with caffeine solution and by minoxidil solution it started from 50 uh, went to 57 to 62 by the six month mark so it seems to be prolonging the antigen phase however again this is not a study done on caffeine shampoo unlike the first study but on caffeine topical solution which normally will be absorbed over several hours so again caffeine Caffeine, so far the first ingredient that kind of makes sense to include it in a shampoo which should be uh, meant for managing androgenetic alopecia. Procyanidine B2 by the way I have I had no idea what that thing is before but now I already did some research on it and it can be also found in foods like cocoa powder, powders, chocolates and broad beans and also in a lower concentration in lentils, uh, yellow wax, beans and common grapes. So again it's something that is uh, commonly found in foods and that's why I don't think there should be a reason to supplement it uh, in form of a shampoo for better hair growth. Of course uh, DS Laboratories again linked this study. Procyanidin B2 reduces the expression of uh, PKC alpha beta 1 beta 2 uh, in cultured murine hair epithelial cells and also inhibits the translocation of these isosomes. So it's a study on mice and it's in vitro study on mice on epithelial cells of mice. So guys it's too far from being even in vitro study on human hair follicle uh, or even further from be, from it being like in vivo study on actual human scalp. Now you can read through the study, uh, you can make from it what you will, but for me it's an ingredient with low relevancy uh, when it comes down to using it in an effective anti-hair loss shampoo. Ornithine, which is another amino acid which can be synthesized in your body. This amino acid can be also found in uh, foods, by the way, like for example poultry, fish, eggs and uh, meats. Uh, it can be also synthesized in your body with help of L-arginine 
actually and there is really no research which would confirm that uh, ornithine has anything to do with uh, you know hair growth uh, promoting better hair growth anti hair loss in fact even DS laboratories I don't think they have some studies linked with ornithine see they don't have all right everybody we have five more ingredients to talk about uh, in the ingredient list of Revita shampoo and uh, this is going to be this right side here other ingredients starting with emu oil I don't want to um, give emu oil too much attention because if we take a look at uh, uh, Revita uh, website or DS Laboratories website why they included emu oil they didn't even provide any studies which would confirm their uh, claims that uh, emu oil has been shown uh, to act as 5-alpha reductase inhibitor and reducing the DHT in the scalp well I found a link to this study which seems to uh, confirm their statement um, unfortunately I cannot open this study but if you go to Google you see that uh, here is the study ginkgo bilboa green tea extracts are known to inhibit 5-alpha reductase and thus reducing dihydrotestosterone but again we are talking about like natural potential DHT blocker emu oil uh, of a strength of I don't know uh, nettle root or a green tea extract I mean these are very uh, like extracts with very low potency especially if you use them in a shampoo which will be rinsed off after three to four minutes again uh, it's probably not gonna be that effective okay so again no study that would have observed uh, emu oil in a shampoo anyways ketoconazole this is probably the most important ingredient you want to have in a shampoo if you want to use this shampoo for management of androgenetic alopecia ketoconazole I don't know whether DS Laboratories using uh, is using 1% or 2% ketoconazole but we know that uh, ketoconazole has antifungal benefits it also um, uh, reduces uh, the dandruff uh, the overpopulation of the malassezia uh, in the scalp which can cause a lot of uh, dandruff and uh, disrupt the scalp pH and um, it has also uh, the potentially DHT suppressive benefits and this has been shown also in a study which was comparing the use of ketoconazole in a shampoo not just uh, use of topical ketoconazole but there are also studies that have been observing uh, top Topical application of ketoconazole in a liquid form uh, but uh, we already know that ketoconazole is effective and that's why I've been also using ketoconazole rich or ketoconazole enriched shampoos in my hair loss prevention routine for over like uh, half a decade right now okay so this is very important and I really suggest you to use a ketoconazole shampoo if not this one maybe another one there are so many of them on the market uh, so make sure you try several of them and see which one suits you best uh, another one uh, which is also marked with slightly green is Ruibos tea I hope I pronounced it that well surprisingly I didn't know about this extract but there is one study from 216 which uh, has been observing rooibos extract effect on the seborrheic scalp improvement of middle-aged men and they also used uh, like uh, it was a four-week clinical trial on 30 males suffering from seborrheic dermatitis and hair loss symptoms to examine the effects of rooibos extract on seborrheic dermatitis the results imply that shampoo and scalp enhancer including rooibos extract effectively improve the oil moisture balance on seborrheic dermatitis and effectively deals with scalp itchiness redness and the color tone of the scalp suggesting its use in scalp cosmetics that include antioxidation activation elements which are effective in improving seborrheic dermatitis so uh, it seems that even if it doesn't act as DHT blocker or a prolonging agent of antigen phase it it could make sense to include it in your shampoo if you are a guy suffering from hair loss maybe you have additional dandruff seborrheic dermatitis and whatnot this thing actually could be useful so I need to give props to DS laboratories for including this ingredient because I did not know about this ingredient before we have two more ingredients tri copper peptides and EUK134 so three copper peptides they have 
Several studies linked uh, below here. Three copper peptides have two main properties, potentially protective anti-inflammatory agents that limit oxidative damage uh, after tissue injury and as tissue remodeling agents. And that's why they also tell that they uh, improved hair transplant success, for example. Uh, I don't know to what extent, uh, but as far as the studies on uh, three peptides, uh, which uh, DS Laboratory uh, refers to here actually one of these five studies is only kind of somewhat involved with hair loss and the, the study two three four five are just some random studies on tricopper peptides without kind of connection to hair loss whatsoever so uh, again this is one of these like maybe cool ingredients that they decided to include in the shampoo which again is not really proven to do anything if you involve it in a shampoo we don't even know how stable are these peptides especially if you buy this half a liter bottle it's gonna sit uh, in your on your shelf in your bathroom for a half a year or a year I don't know how stable these peptides are going to be in that shampoo I don't know again uh, for me it's like a hyped up ingredient uh, but nothing that I would want to have in my shampoo the last uh, ingredient on the list is EUK134 uh, again no studies as far as um, you know EUK improving hair growth uh, uh, stable hair loss but there is uh, one interesting study which actually has shown that it makes sense to use EUK 134 uh, for uh, reversing graying of your hair so uh, actually you can try it out but probably better if you use the topical EUK 134 it should be also uh, expensive at least they say that few products on the market use this uh, antioxidant due to its elevated cost so it's something that should reverse graying uh, uh, maybe you can check out the reddit or some forums uh, what uh, some guys maybe uh, who use this compound already experienced in terms of uh, you know reversing their graying hair so let's see but again as far as using it in a shampoo for management of hair loss doesn't make so much sense to me because there is no study uh, which would have confirmed the efficacy of this uh, ingredient for hair loss all right guys so which are the most relevant ingredients that i would want to have in uh, a shampoo from this list uh, if this shampoo is meant to uh, manage my androgenetic alopecia or slow down androgenetic alopecia in some way maybe prolong the antigen phase or block the DHT inhibit the 5-alpha reductase or fight possible seborrheic dermatitis uh, take care of the proper pH balance on the scalp then I would only mention or name these following ingredients first most important one ketoconazole this one second one caffeine and the third one Rui Bos tea Rui Bose tea so these are three ingredients in my opinion in my opinion that are the most relevant in this shampoo because these three ingredients have been also directly uh, researched uh, for managing androgenetic alopecia in a shampoo in a shampoo form okay lastly let's take a look at the price of Ravita shampoo and how it measures up to other pretty well-known shampoos that are marketed as DHT blocking shampoos uh, so I have personally tried all of them besides Revita so probably Revita should be the last one on the list and I may as well try it out after I run out of my current shampoo which is uh, hair restore shampoo from uh, hair restoration laboratories now uh, if you take a look at the prices uh, for the 400 to 500 milliliter supply which is uh, fairly similar with all of these shampoos we see that the price ranges from 30 uh, by Nizoral is the cheapest one all the way up to 60 which is Revita shampoo okay now uh, as far as the key ingredients as we have already uh, talked in this video ketoconazole and caffeine are the main ingredients that I want to have in my uh, shampoo which is meant to manage my androgenetic alopecia from all of these four shampoos, only Revita and the Hair Restore shampoo from Hair Restoration Laboratories, these two shampoos have these two ingredients. And on top of that, Revita also has the um, Ruibos, uh, Ruibos extract, which is additional benefit, which the Hair Restore shampoo from Hair Restoration Laboratories doesn't have. Okay, so that's uh, the difference. As far as Nizoral and Region Pure, you see that uh, Nizoral has ketoconazole since it's also known as the ketoconazole shampoo 
It can have one or two percent ketoconazole and the region pure doesn't have ketoconazole but it has caffeine and uh, the niceral doesn't have caffeine. Obviously uh, niceral doesn't have anything else besides uh, ketoconazole. It's very simple shampoo. It's only known for being the anti-dandruff shampoo and it's also FDA approved as anti-dandruff shampoo. It has one or two percent ketoconazole. For severe cases of dandruff uh, you can use two percent ketoconazole but do not overuse it uh, because then uh, you can cause some really severe skin drying and redness as well which also happens to me back in the days. Now uh, Regent Pure has caffeine and also some other uh, ingredients like zinc, uh, uh, things like uh, linoleic acid, sopal metal, pretty much linoleic and oleic acid which are also building blocks of sopal metal but again these are fatty acids it also has a jojoba oil but again it's questionable how these uh, fatty acids uh, will absorb during your normal shampooing routine which lasts maybe three minutes and we know that fatty acids have also higher molecular weight so uh, unless you're not like microneedling before shampooing it's very questionable whether this is gonna have any effect that's why I didn't uh, you know I don't think that it's important to have a lot of fatty acids in your shampoo since they haven't been even observed to be effective in a shampoo anyways so uh, just to put it in a perspective in my opinion I think uh, you are gonna be best off uh, with Revita and hair restore shampoo from hair restoration laboratories you can choose between these two uh, maybe you can try both of them out and see which one suits you best as I said I'm uh, currently using hair restore shampoo and I have been using it since like three years right now because I think it has the best price quality ratio on the market uh, Revita is also good and I I may as well try it out after I run out of my current uh, hair restore shampoo bottle and we'll see how I like Revita but uh, as you see uh, it's a good price uh, $60 for 500 milliliter obviously a little bit more expensive than the hair restore shampoo but uh, it's gonna last you one and a half years anyway so it's if you take a look at it from this perspective this it's it's a long-term investment so $60 it's gonna be like less than five dollars per month and as you see most of these shampoos are costing you from 30 to 50 60 dollars so it's pretty much uh, a similar uh, price range already for this amount of uh, shampoo liquid and that you're gonna apply so okay uh, there was a little wrap up at the end guys hope you enjoyed this video uh, that's pretty much it uh, I hope this will help you uh, with your decision if you are currently searching for the best possible shampoo that is going to target androgenetic alopecia and don't just have like bunch of additional ingredients which are just cool you are overpaying for them but actually are not really getting that benefit uh, for that additional price so uh, thank you so much for watching if you want to support my channel obviously check out the links in the video description like my shampoo hair restore that I'm using you can get it as well and support my channel uh, I get a commission in the return there is a free Facebook group you can also check out on Facebook hair transplant experiences with over 2,900 members in the group so make sure you check it out uh, my website as well Matt Diamond and Scone where you can also sign up for a one-on-one -on -one call with me where I can assist you directly throughout your hair transplant research I can help you out with your hair loss management one-on-one -on -one. And uh, one last thing, my hair transplant related guides as well, uh, you can find them on my website. Uh, they're uh, containing different pieces of information on how to properly research your hair transplant doctor, best hair transplant clinics uh, in Turkey and best hair transplant doctor collection worldwide. So make sure you check it out. I'm gonna be looking forward to see you in another video. Take care.